for this speech, no. For your future speeches, you will dress business casual. Which, I can give you an example. What's your name again? Raj. Raj. He's dressed business casual. Polo shirt, nice jeans, nice shoes. That's business casual. No shorts or things like that. Um, she's dressed business casual. Let's see. You're dressed business casual. It's just like you look decent. Like you could go to work on a casual Friday in, a, in an office setting and you'd still look like you were a professional. That's basically what it is. Okay, so you guys have this packet in front of you. Uh, how many of you have given a speech before in school? Okay, so just a few of you. How many of you have ever given a speech about yourself in school? Okay, so this might seem familiar to you. So you guys are going to be doing what's called an introduction speech. It'll be two to four minutes long, and you'll basically be talking about yourself the whole time. So it's everyone's favorite speech. So on the front page here, you've got your grading form. It's got 10 basic criteria, and I'm just gonna go over what these criteria mean. You can look for more details in your textbook, but there are 10 criteria here. They're each worth five points apiece for a total of 50 points. So the first one here is open with impact. When you start out your speech, you don't wanna start out by saying, hi, my name is, and I'm gonna be giving a speech about blank. You wanna start out, do you have a question? You're good? Okay, so you wanna start out by doing something that catches the audience's attention. So you might want to start out by asking a question, or having them stand up to represent a statistic, or start out with a quote. Do a quick demonstration. Do something that catches their attention right away. Make sure it's maybe about 30 seconds, maybe less for this speech, since it's only a two to four minute speech. Your appropriate appearance, you just asked that question about it. For this speech, you don't have to dress in any particular way, but for future speeches, you will dress business casual. The next criteria is varied vocal dynamics. When you're up here speaking, you want to sound like you're excited, and you want to speak loud enough for everybody to hear you, and also slow enough and make sure you articulate so that people understand everything you're saying. I have some people who get up here, and they say, I'm really excited to talk to you guys. Um, it's, I'm really happy to be here. And it doesn't sound like they're happy. You, you want to be excited because if you don't have that energy, the rest of the class isn't going to have that energy and they're not going to want to listen to your speech. You want to engage them every step of the way. So the next part, we've got eye contact with your audience. That's another way to engage your audience. Make sure that you're establishing eye contact with them. Some speech textbooks and some professors will tell you, find three friendly faces in the classroom. Some people say that's not a great rule of thumb, but I'm okay with that. So what I tell my students is, once you are set up into your groups, I tell students to tell their group members to scatter around the room so that while they're giving their speech, they have those friendly, familiar faces that they're looking at. You can tell your group members, I want you to smile at me the whole time. Give me a thumbs up. Do something that makes me feel good during my speech. That way you're making eye contact throughout the room and you're not favoring any particular person or particular area. I tied in appropriate use of note cards with that same category because what I see a lot of people do is they have their note cards up here and all they do is read off the note cards. So you wanna make sure you're not doing that. If you have note cards, don't use them as a crutch. Don't use them to lean on, don't rely on them. So you wanna make sure that you are still establishing eye contact and that if you do look down at the note cards, it's just for a quick second to you know, pick up where you left off and make sure you're uh, on the right track. Very appropriate gestures. You also want to make sure that you're gesturing. Use your hands. Some people prefer to walk. You are totally fine if you want to walk to the other side of the PowerPoint here. Um, continue talking. Don't overdo it. Just walk a little bit. I do see some people who get way too comfortable with the movement, and they start doing the pacing thing, and it gets really obnoxious after a while, so try not to overdo it with the movement. You can stand in one place. That's fine. Use some hand gestures. I do see people who stand like this. I see people who kind of back up into the board, and that's awkward, um, or they jingle change in their pocket. So make sure that you're doing something purposeful to draw your audience in. Appropriate use of language. Don't use slang. Make sure that everyone's understanding what you're saying. I have to tell some of my students, please don't curse. You should be professional when you're presenting speeches. You guys, I'm sure, probably don't need that. Clear, smooth transitions. Make sure that as you are speaking, that you are fluid. 
that you know where you're headed from point to point. You don't want to be jumping all over the place. You want to make sure that your speech is very smooth. Well-developed main points and organization, that's along those same lines. Make sure that you have planned and prepared your speech enough so that you know where you're headed ahead of time. You have point A, B, C, you know where you're going throughout your speech. I've seen some people who are giving their speech, they get close to the end and say, oh my gosh, I forgot this part. Hold on, hold on, okay. So let me go back here, this will make a lot more sense now. Don't do that. Make sure that you have it planned out from start to finish so that the audience can follow you easily. Effective dynamic ending. Don't end with that's it. I have so many students over the past six years, so many students who end with that's it. That's a really ineffective way to end. It kind of takes the wind out of everybody's sails. It, it's not exciting for anybody to end that way. So make sure you've got at least a nice one-liner to end with. Perhaps you're giving a speech about procrastination about putting off your assignments until the last minute. You might end your speech by saying, so hopefully you guys don't plan any all night study sessions this semester, thank you. And that's it, it was just a one sentence, nice closing with thank you at the end. That's perfectly appropriate. If you wanna end with a quote, that's fine too. Make sure it has purpose. Don't ramble and don't end with that. And also, one more thing, don't walk off the stage while you're ending your speech, because that's also very, um, a very ineffective ending. Lastly, overall preparation. If you have done all these things, I'm impressed with your open with impact, your appearance, your very vocal dynamics, all those criteria, clearly you've prepared, so you will get the credit for that criteria. Moving on to the next page, so we went through this whole grading form. The next page here, is your introduction speech overview. And again, all of this is in Canvas. So I'm not gonna read through all of this, but it just says your speech is worth 50 points, two to four minutes long. Use as many note cards as you need, but please do not rely on them way too much while you're up here presenting. The purpose of your speech is to give you a chance to learn more about your fellow classmates. The speech should be interesting to your audience, it should be fun for you, it should be a chance for you guys to get to know each other and feel a little bit more comfortable. Also, make sure it is classroom appropriate and will not offend the instructor or your classmates or embarrass anybody, that's pretty important. Organization, you've got your introduction here, the body. These are some topics you can choose from. So my pet peeve, I know that's a term you guys might not be familiar with. A pet peeve is something that really annoys you. Maybe someone cracking their knuckles or playing with their hair. That's a pet peeve, something that really, really bugs you. Another one you could do is the last time you went on a blind date, the worst trouble you got into as a little kid, the uh, most fun you had on a trip or vacation, the most unforgettable person you ever met, an embarrassing moment, a lesson you learned in life, an unforgettable or life-changing experience, or culture. Uh, if you guys want to talk about your culture, that'd be awesome. You can split it up into three main points if you want. You can split it up and discuss it in your speech however you like. I see some people talk about the foods, the traditions, and the you know fun things, maybe the tourist attractions, where they're from, and those are their three main points in their speech. So that's just an idea for you guys. You can choose some other topics too, as long as they're still about you. Some people decide to do a speech on the class or the book that made them choose a certain career. Um, so anything that really impacted your life, run it by me first, just so I make sure that it's the right type of speech. I did have someone do a speech about Jeeps for their intro speech once. It slipped by me, and it was not about them. It was about the history of Jeeps. And so make sure it is about you. I know, it's kind of random, but it happens. <laughs> so anyway. So that's the introduction, the body, and then for your conclusion, I've got some samples here about how you could conclude your speech. And then lastly here for this overview, I have your presentation. Make sure that you deliver in a conversational style, that you've rehearsed. Make sure that you're talking to us. Don't stand here and read your speech very robotically so that it sounds like you're not really talking to us. Make sure that when you're talking, it's like you're having a conversation with us, but you're very prepared. Don't memorize your speech, that's, that's really, um, you might get in trouble um, up here while you're speaking if you try to memorize it. I've seen people sitting here trying to memorize or trying to remember word for word what they said in their speech 
and there are sometimes up to 30 second, 60 second pauses because they're trying to recall the exact line. That's really not a good idea, so do not memorize your speech. Make sure that you take some notes, you know generally what you're going to say, you've practiced it, but that you don't know what word is the word. That's key. All right, so that's it for the overview. This is just, this next page here, this is my lecture that I'll be going over in a minute. So that's all this is. It's just six slides, um, and I'll do that after I go over these. The next page here, I had a seminal class ask me one time to give them a sample introduction speech. They wanted it word for word. So one morning I woke up and I typed out this speech so I could give it to them. I looked in textbooks and on Google, but I couldn't find anything that was exactly what I was looking for uh, to give them an example of an introduction speech. So this is titled, My Life is a Procrastinator. I just totally made it up. It is two to four minutes though. So you'll notice there's an introduction, there's a body, uh, and then there's some main points here. One main point is history, one main point is evolution, the third main point is how I changed it. So you can kind of see how this procrastination changed over the years. That's how the speaker chose to split it up. And then you've got your conclusion down there at the bottom. Now if you read this, you'll notice there's some parentheses here. If you read everything in between the parentheses, it is a speech from start to finish. It is two to three minutes long. So if you want to go practice in your dorm room or in front of your friends and you just want to see what it would feel like to give an intro speech, try just reading this out loud, um, conversationally, as if this was actually your story, just to get a feel for it, the way you might want to speak it. And again, it is two to three minutes long if you speak it at a normal pace. So that might be some good practice for you guys. This next page here are your note cards. Again, same seminal class said, what, what should our note cards look like? And I said, well, it really depends on you. Everyone can do note cards differently. Um, if you want to have a lot more text on your note cards, that's okay. Again, as long as you are just using it for key points. Some people like to have a little safety net there, so they put a lot of information, but they're really only glancing down maybe once or twice per note card, so that's okay. Some people just want the basics. They just want their, their key point on each note card. So this is this would be your introduction note card. This is note card number two, note card number three, and so forth. I think I gave this person five note cards. So you'll notice for the introduction, it's word for word. I wrote out the introduction word for word because you want to make sure that that introduction is flawless. You also want to make sure that your conclusion is flawless. Those are the two parts your audience remembers. As far as research shows, it's the whole primacy recency effect thing, and we'll go over that later on this term, but the primacy recency effect basically says that people remember the first things you said and the last things you said. So you wanna make sure those are awesome. So I wrote this out word for word, and you'll notice his introduction is, how many of you procrastinated when it came to preparing your speech today? So naturally, some people timidly rose their hands, some people laughed. It was a great way to break the ice and to get the audience interested in what he was going to be talking about. Then he introduced himself, because it is an introduction speech, and then he wrote down some key points about what he wanted to talk about when it came to his history with procrastination. Then when it comes to main point two, he talked about the evolution, how his procrastination started getting out of control. And he wrote down some key words here that would help him remember what he wanted to say during his speech. The last two cards here, how he changed his ways. And again, he had some key points. And then for his conclusion, it's spelled out word for word. He says, so now that you've all heard my story, hopefully you'll learn, you've learned more about me and you won't plan any all night cram sessions this semester. Thank you. Cram, cram session, do you know what that means? So that, that, those are some note cards, some easy note cards for you guys if you choose to do that. Introduction speech topics, this is the last one. So you do not have to choose from these, if, for those of you that have this in front of you. You don't have to choose from these topics, but these are some topics I have heard in the past. So some people talk about the most fun they ever had, which was a senior prank. Someone wrote the most fun trip they ever had was a trip to New York. 
Some people wrote about embarrassing moments like falling off a skateboard or an unforgettable person like their high school teacher, their best friend. A life lesson learned was don't take 8 a.m. classes, which you guys may relate to. 8.30 a.m. class right now. Uh, let's see. A pet peeve, something that annoyed someone, was when girls wear too much makeup at the gym. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. Um, and a talent show lesson learned. So those are just a few from this list. You can do whatever topic you want as long as it is one of those eight. But it's just your own life experience. So those are some of the topics. Now I'm going to go over that lecture that I mentioned briefly. And this will only be about two minutes long. All right, so what you guys are going to do for your introduction speech, you're going to tell us about yourself for two to four minutes. It is worth 50 points. It says dress professionally. For this speech, don't worry about it. You can dress casual. Your PowerPoint and a formal outline are not requirements for this speech. You guys are going to be getting into that later in the term, and you will always have PowerPoints and formal outlines do. For this speech, all you need to bring is yourself and your note cards, if you have note cards. These are some of the topics. So these are some of the topics I mentioned. Bad blind date, best vacation. I won't go over all of them again. And again, if you have a different topic in mind, just run it by me. That's absolutely fine. A lot of people have some really great alternative topics. This is the basic way you would lay out a speech. So you've got your introduction. You've got open with impact. Some basic information about yourself. Hi, my name is Joe Brown. I'm a freshman biology major. The body of your speech, this is where you tell your story. I'm not picky about the body of your speech for this one, as long as it sounds really good and it's prepared. I'm not particularly worried about how many main points you have. So it could just be a long story you want to tell, it's very well developed, or it can be one to three main points, like I showed you guys with the procrastination speech. For your conclusion, just have a wrap-up statement. Just something to very nicely conclude your speech and then end with thank you. This is the grading form. Again, just went over this um, in the packet. So these are your 10 criteria, and they're going to be worth five points a piece. And lastly, read through the packet. It will definitely help you out. Uh, I didn't go over it nearly enough, but we don't have enough time to really read through everything. So go through it on your own. There are a ton of examples in there, different ways to do intros, conclusions, and the body of your speech. And your textbook also has a lot of samples and more details in there for you. Prepare your content. I have so many people say, oh, I can just wing it. I'll just, I'll just get up in front of a class and I will just make it up. Most of the time, that does not work out well. I have seen it go so bad. So really, really prepare your speech. Even if you think, oh, I just went on that trip two weeks ago. I can just stand up there and tell everyone what happened. Most of the time, you will not recall the details you want to recall. For one, because you didn't take the time to plan it, and for two, because you're nervous, and you're going to forget a lot of things, so you want to be planning ahead of time. Practice out loud. That is huge. Practice out loud for someone before you come in here to do the real thing. A lot of times, you don't know how prepared or underprepared you are until you practice in front of someone ahead of time. So get some of your friends together. Practice out here in the lobby somewhere. Find an empty classroom. It will really help you to understand how the nerves are going to hit you. You will get nervous, even if you don't think you will. But if you practice in front of three or so people ahead of time, you're going to understand, ooh, okay, my throat's really dry. I'm having a hard time breathing properly. So maybe you could write down on your note cards, breathe here. Or remember, okay, my throat's getting really dry. Maybe I'll have a bottle of water that I'll have over there just in case I need it. So you need to understand how those nerves hit you before you get up to do the real thing. I say three times in front of different groups. Practice in front of those different groups. The more you do it, the better it is. And lastly, oops, oh no. Okay, well the last point was relax and breathe. I know a lot of people think, oh my gosh, public speaking class, this is our first speech. I know it's a little bit nerve wracking, but you guys are all friends in here. Um, and when you get up here, you know, it's just about you. It's just two to four minutes. You don't have to have any research. Like I said, it's, it's a very supportive environment. 
So relax and breathe. Make sure you get plenty of practice in and you will be perfect.